just like my body is moving on its own. I'm just making pizza, like no thoughts, just making pizzas. Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to The Gamer's Heart, the podcast about cozy games and making games cozy. I hope you're having an amazing day today. I'm very excited to dive into this episode because we're having a cute little game recommendations episode for you. This is something a little bit more light and fluffy. I do have some like really meaty topics coming up that I'm so excited for. But, you know, today I just wanted to talk about some of my favorite games. Specifically, we're going to be talking about podcast games. I heard this on TikTok originally from a book talker who was talking about his favorite games to listen to while he listened to podcasts or audiobooks. And I just really loved that idea because that is one of my favorite activities, I guess, like playing some sort of mindless, relaxing game and then having a podcast or having an audiobook. Sometimes I even put up like a YouTube video or a TV show, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're going to talk about what a podcast game is and what I think makes a good podcast game. And then I have lots of good recommendations for you. But before we get started with that, I had an idea and I think I'm going to add a segment to this podcast that is about gaming news or announcements. I really love talking about what's going on in the gaming industry, particularly with cozy games. Y'all y'all know this. This is kind of the point of this podcast. However, I feel like there's a lot of really like interesting news and stories that come up in between episodes that are super interesting and I want to talk about them. However, they don't really make for a full episode. And since I love to keep y'all up to date, I figured I'll add a segment where I just talk about maybe one or two news stories, things of interest that happened in the cozy and indie gaming space in between episodes. So we're going to start with that today. The first thing that I have to talk about is not something super positive, but it appears that the mass layoffs that are happening in the gaming space have now trickled down into our cozy gaming bubble as Singularity 6, the developers of Palea, have laid off about a third of their staff. I originally saw this story from Nicole Carpenter on Twitter, who is the senior reporter at Polygon. She is an amazing follow if you're interested in keeping up with gaming news. She reported on this first and then I started to see a couple of different articles coming out. I also saw some tweets from the various people on staff. It appears that this layoff affects all sorts of different positions within the company. I saw some artists that got laid off. I saw one of the community managers that got laid off, as well as a bunch of the narrative team. We've talked about Palea extensively on this podcast. I actually have a full episode just about Palea, so if you're interested and you haven't listened to that, you can go back and listen to that one. But this definitely raises some warning bells in my mind, and it's a little bit tricky because I know to a certain extent it is normal for once a project has been completed and developed, then layoffs happen, right? When a game is published, you don't really need as many writers and artists and stuff like that on the team. However, I feel like this is a little bit of a different situation with Palea because number one, Palea technically isn't even fully released yet. Palea is still in beta. And also this is a live service game. The model of this game really depends on them continuously providing content updates for people to come back and play the game. So if you're getting rid of a large amount of the people that would be instrumental in doing that, it makes me really wonder about what the future of Palea is going to look like. Are we going to see fewer content updates? Are we going to see a decline in quality? And while I do love Palea, there is definitely a lot of content that feels missing from the game. There feels like there is a lot more that they can and should be adding to the game. At this point in time, most of the gameplay revolves around grinding for resources and grinding for decorations and decorating. That in and of itself, I don't think is enough to keep people coming coming back to the game and continuing to play it. This all really just serves to really justify the concerns that a lot of people, myself included, have had about the game, particularly around the monetization of the game, which is wondering, is their monetization structure 
enough. And seeing this, I definitely don't think that it is. Paleo's monetization does not depend on any tiny micro transactions or pay to win mechanics. It's all cosmetic bundles, outfits, and things like that. Each one of those outfits is going to run you about 20 to 25 to 30 dollars. On average, there's different pricings for things. And the game can completely be played without ever purchasing one of those outfits. Their entire monetization really depends on their ability to get people to buy those cosmetic items, which number one, a lot of people don't really like the cosmetic items. I personally like some of them, but some people don't and really just don't have any interest in buying them. And number two, we're living in really hard economic time. 20 to $30 for a cosmetic item in game is really asking a lot of people considering that people are struggling to buy groceries. People are struggling to buy themselves clothes. And so why would they buy clothes for their in-game avatar when they need to be caring for themselves, their families or whatever? Hi, this is Editing Light popping in to clarify that I'm not trying to say that Palea shouldn't have any monetization pieces in it or that the monetization pieces that they have aren't good. Like I appreciate that they aren't pay to win and they don't impact the gameplay. However, I just think that maybe for it being a free game, the monetization strategy that they have employed may not be enough. It's very complicated and I don't have a good answer for it, but yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. So yeah, I'm just starting to get a little bit worried for the future of Palea. This is definitely a story that I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on. I really enjoy being kind of ear to the ground about Palea and you can expect that I'll continue to do that. We were talking about this on my stream uh, last week and one of the people that I was chatting with was like, oh, I can't wait for your rise and fall of Paleo video <laughs> essay. I was like, if that happens, you can bet it's coming because I've covered this game enough that I feel like I truly understand the ins and outs, at least from my perspective. Obviously, I'm not like on the team. I'm not an insider. I'm not even a Paleo partner. So I'm com coming at this from an outside perspective, but I feel like I fully understand it from that perspective. <laughs> Singularity 6 did make a statement kind of explaining themselves and why the layoffs happened. They said, following Paleo's release on Steam, we evaluated the support needed to deliver the highest quality gameplay service for long-term stability. We made the difficult decision to reduce our workforce, which impacted around 35% of our talented and hardworking team members. We value their contributions and are committed to supporting them throughout this process, including severance, work placement, da, 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 da. The decision was not made lightly and comes after careful consideration of our development and business needs to support Paleo and its community. We may remain committed to delivering passion and imagination, maintaining the dedication and creativity that our community expects and deserves. We appreciate your understanding and support of our studio and affected team members. This really feels like a non-response to me. It's basically just like, yes, we did it. Our needs were such that we got rid of a bunch of people. Again, I'm just thinking about the fact that this game is literally still in beta. It's not released yet, which is a whole other issue because there was some drama about the fact that once it released on Steam, they didn't make any indication that the game was in beta or early access or anything like that. That's a whole other situation. But the fact that this game isn't even released yet and they're reducing their staff by 35%, I'm just wondering, along with the very valid criticisms that people have of the game, the content they feel that is lacking, et cetera, et cetera, I just, something is fishy here. Something feels fishy. And I do think that it has to do with the failures of their monetization structure. Either way, the biggest thing to take away from this is the team members who were let go. My heart goes out to them. And I really, really hope that they are able to quickly find new positions that are very fulfilling to them. I mean, they, they did an amazing job. I really, really wish the best for everyone who was impacted. And the next two stories that I have for you are a little bit shorter and definitely more positive. Number one, they've announced that they're making a film adaptation of the game Dredge, which is just so exciting. I jumped up out of my seat when I saw that because I was so excited. Dredge, for those of you who don't know, is a cozy fishing slash eldritch horror game. You play as a fisherman, you go to this kind of remote archipelago and there you do quests for people you obviously fish you build up your ship and you encounter a lot of very strange sea creatures it's very cool the way it plays out at first you're kind of just catching normal fish but then as you go you start to catch 
weirder and weirder stuff and then you have to go out to these remote locations and there's like a sea monster there and it can be a very kind of scary game but at the same time it's a very cozy game but the thing that I love about this is just how cool the vibe and the aesthetic of this game is it's very moody it's very dark I think the story of Dredge is really cool and I'm excited to see that but what I'm really excited about is just seeing how that moodiness carries over into the film adaptation. So that I'm really excited about. It's coming from the producer who did the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and his production company that is gonna be working on this also did the Tomb Raider show on Netflix and they're doing a couple of other video game adaptations at the moment. So clearly they're no stranger to video game adaptations, which is very good, very promising. So I'm super excited about that. And then the last thing is that the Tales of the Shire game announced that they're gonna have a trailer that comes out on April 22nd, which as I'm recording this and probably as, as it's published as well, will be next week, which is so exciting. I'm gonna be all over that. I don't know about y'all, but Tales of the Shire is a game that I am just rabid for. I'm just ravenous for any scrap of information about it. It's the cozy Hobbit game that's coming from the Weta Workshop, which are the people who actually made a lot of the um, prosthetics and costumes and stuff for the movies, which is cool. They know the ins and outs. They know, they know all this stuff like the back of their hands. So that's very exciting as well. Okay, so let's get to the main meat of the episode and talk about what is a podcast game. A podcast game is essentially just a game that you can play and it is still easy for you to listen to a podcast or an audiobook or maybe watch a TV show or watch a YouTube video. These games tend to be games that are sort of of mindless in a certain way, perhaps monotonous. Either way, they're just something that doesn't take a lot of your brain power to do. And so you can use that brain power then to pay attention to whatever it is that you're doing on the side. So some games obviously require a lot of thought processing. They require you to listen to dialogue maybe. They require you to read. Those sorts of games are games that I can't really play when I'm listening to something. Anything that I yeah don't have to read, I don't have to listen to dialogue. Um, it's not overly complicated. I'm not trying to figure out where I'm going and what I'm doing and it's not super tactical. Those kinds of things are the things that I like to play. It's one of my favorite activities. I find it very relaxing to just sit at my computer and have on an audiobook or have on a podcast and just kind of chill and relax and just listen to whatever I'm listening to and do this very like mindless, relaxing game. And usually it feels very zen, like the types of games that are podcast games are often games where you just kind of get in the zone and they're very satisfying. But let's talk about what some of my favorite podcast games are. I have some awesome recommendations for you. All different kinds of games. I hope that you find something that you love on this list. The first one that I want to talk about that I absolutely love is Power Wash Simulator. This is kind of the ultimate mindless relaxation. You know, the basic premise of this game is just that you get to these large maps that are covered in dirt and you have to power wash them and you power wash everything. And then when everything is done, you finish that level and you move on to the next level. It's a really cool game. It actually does have sort of this overarching story to it if you're paying attention, but you're not having to continuously read stuff. You're not having to continuously like process the storyline. Maybe you'll You'll see some text messages pop up at the very beginning of the level and then most of the time you're just power washing. I beat this game, the story mode of this game, and I pretty much did the entire thing while listening to audiobooks. I absolutely love this one. There's also a VR version of this game, which I haven't played, but I have heard that it's very, very good. If you have a VR headset, that might be a good option for you as well. Either way, this one is... Perfect, I love this game for that. My next recommendation for you is Good Pizza, Great Pizza. This one kind of does require some thought at times and a little bit of reading, but I have not found that it is something that is particularly demanding of, and I can usually keep paying attention to a podcast or whatever I'm listening to. Maybe you wanna listen to something that's a little bit less, you know, difficult to process. This is just one of my favorite games in general. It's a pizza game where you run a pizza shop and it's, you know, very simple. Customers come, they tell you what pizza they want, you make the pizza, you give it to them. 
you earn money and then you use that money to buy decorations for your shop and you buy upgrades for your shop. There is kind of a storyline to follow, but again, it's not something that requires a ton of reading. Every now and then there's something that will happen at the beginning of the day that is story related that you'll have to kind of pay attention to. But for the most part, this is very much a zen game for me. I get in the zone and then it's just like my body is moving on its own. I'm just making pizza, like no thoughts, just making pizzas. It's perfect. I think it's a really great game for playing while you are listening to something else. And then the next one is a little bit ironic considering what we talked about at the beginning of the episode, but Palea. Palea is an awesome mindless game when you're playing solo. So if you're playing with friends, obviously you're gonna be talking to your friends or interacting with your friends. That's a different situation but especially in those times in Palea where I'm just kind of grinding honestly any game that has a grind while you're doing the grind is a great time to listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, watch a show. Even like Disney Dreamlight Valley, a lot of times in Disney Dreamlight Valley, if I'm doing the grindy part, that is something that I will, you know, put on something to listen to while I play. But back to Palea, most of the game is grinding. So you're going out, you're collecting resources, you're fishing, you're bug catching, things like that. Honestly, for me, sometimes that can get boring. I'm not really someone who minds a grind in a game as long as it feels fulfilling at the end of it. But I think the reason why I don't mind it is because I listen to stuff and I watch stuff while I'm doing it. So it's kind of like a double activity. Like, yeah, I'm doing and playing this game, but I'm also just listening to my audiobook, watching my TV show. And so while I'm doing those very grindy tasks in Palea, it is a perfect time to listen to something. And that's why I think it makes a great podcast game. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about is a little bit different. This is actually a sport game, sort of. It's a skateboarding action platforming game called Ollie Ollie World. This game came out in 2022. I actually worked with the developers of this on some sponsored content back in the day. I genuinely think this game is so, so fun. It is a skateboarding action platformer. You tackle different courses, you have to learn the courses, and you progress through like that. The characters are all really cute. The art style is absolutely stunning. The color palette is just chef's kiss to die for. I feel like the game does take some thought in a certain way in that you have to learn the tracks and you have to focus on what it is that you're doing because it's a platforming game. So you very much have to be paying attention and reacting to what's happening. But with podcast games, I don't think the game always needs to be mindless. I think anything that you can just kind of like lock on and just kind of have this like zen, this focus on, as long as you're not having to split your brain power too much. I'm kind of repeating myself, but, you know, reading dialogue and um, making decisions, listening to characters talk. There really isn't any of that. Um, just a tiny bit of that in Ollie Ollie World. So this is a game that you can really lock on to. It's very repetitive. I think that's another thing that helps with a podcast game is, is it something that's repetitive because you can kind of just get in the flow of that. You get in this sort of flow state with it. This is a great game. So I definitely highly recommend that one. All right, next up, I'm gonna really lump two games into here, fully understanding that they are different games in some ways, but similar in other ways, which is World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. This really depends on what exact activity you're doing in this game, because in both of these games, there's a lot of different things to do. Some content is more mindless than others, but there is a lot of grinding in this game. And I feel like there's a lot of activities that you can do in the games that are very conducive to being a podcast game and listening to something while you play. For example, I'm gonna speak more on World of Warcraft because that's what I'm more familiar with. Although I have played quite a bit of Final Fantasy XIV, it's just been a long time since I played. I'm more of a World of Warcraft girly myself. But with World of Warcraft, some things that I like to do while I'm listening to podcasts is leveling. You you do sort of have to read what is going on so you know what to do, you know what's going on. A lot of it is just like fetch quest kind of stuff. It can be very repetitive. It's very much like, okay, go kill these baddies, come back. Okay, now go kill these baddies and come back. And so the repetitiveness of that, I think is very conducive to it being a podcast game. There's also a lot of things to do in World of Warcraft that are very grindy, like fishing. One time I spent like days fishing in a game to try to get one thing that I needed to get a certain mount that I wanted, which is this really cute otter that wears sunglasses. I mean, I definitely, I was watching Netflix, but because fishing in the game is just like click, click, 
click, click. And so I had Netflix up and I was watching Netflix while I was doing that. Side note, I know that MMOs are not always what are considered cozy. And again, speaking more for World of Warcraft, I just wanna let y'all know as a little side note <laughs> that if you're interested in getting into World of Warcraft for the first time or getting back into it, maybe you're a long-term player looking for a World of Warcraft community, we do have a World of Warcraft community within my community. So on Discord, we have people that talk about World of Warcraft, but specifically we talk about playing it in a cozy way. So we're all about cozy World of Warcraft, meaning we focus on the more cozy activities of it. We focus on being supportive and uplifting in a community that can a lot of times get pretty toxic. We strive to be the anti that. And we also have a guild. So we have a community of folks that gets together and plays together pretty frequently. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check the link in the show notes or the description and that'll take you to the discord which will then direct you to the guild if that's something that you're interested in well, the next game that i want to talk about is house flipper specifically house flipper 2 house flipper 1 is good but i like house flipper 2 a lot better i think that it has more interesting things to do and there's a lot of like quality of life upgrades that make it worth it to get house flipper 2 but if you're just wanting to test out this type of game house flipper 1 is also available and it's pretty cheap. So either one of those is really good. This game is very simply a game where you flip houses. You'll get jobs, first of all, where they'll be like, hey, I want you to come clean up my house. And you go to the house, you clean it up. And so you do things like throw trash away, vacuum, wipe dirt off of stuff. You'll have to paint sometimes or change out the flooring, add in furniture, all these kinds of different things. So you start off just by doing jobs. And then as you start to earn money from those, eventually you can purchase houses and then completely flip the houses and sell them for a profit. This game is so freaking number one, addicting. And number two, it is so fun. Like I love it so much. It is a perfect game for listening to a podcast. And also, I also want to talk about Supermarket Simulator. This is a game that I've been very addicted to lately. Supermarket Simulator is literally just what it sounds like. You are running a supermarket. And so you start off with just one tiny little room with one shelf of products. So you're in charge of stocking, restocking, checking out customers. And as you start to earn money, you can expand your shop. You can buy licenses to have new and different products. You can hire people to do your restocking and your registers for you. It is also a very repetitive, mindless, and monotonous sort of game that I just I love so much. It's very satisfying to expand and very exciting to purchase your new product license and start being able to sell different things or expanding your shop. You can also set it up however you want so you can move shelves around. The game is in early access, so just something to keep in mind if you're somebody who doesn't like to do early access, which is 100% valid. At this point, they don't really have decorations. That's something that I would love to see is the ability to decorate your shop however you want. Decorating is always an important part of any game for me, but it is, it's very, very good. I honestly think that any of those simulator games like Power Wash Simulator or there's like a lawn mowing simulator, there's a gas station simulator. Any of those I think would probably be a good bet for a podcast game. I don't know about Farming Simulator. I've played Farming Simulator a little bit, which is a farm sim, as the name implies. However, it's a lot more realistic than something like Stardew Valley or Coral Island. It is a simulator game, but I find that one to be a little bit too complex, which is a strength of it. So I think it's a great game, but I, I fear that it might be a little bit too complex. But at the end of the day, I do feel like it's a little bit subjective what you feel is a good podcast game. When I was doing some research for this episode, I saw a couple of Reddit threads and things like that where people were talking about what's a good podcast game and people were like Elden Ring, which yeah, I guess so. I mean, if you're just going around and, and killing things and exploring, that could be also a really good avenue to listen to podcasts while you play. So it is gonna be pretty subjective, which leads me to my question for you, which is what is your favorite game to play while you are listening to a podcast or an audiobook or watching a show? And bonus question, I wanna know what you like to listen to while you play stuff. I personally listen to a lot of audiobooks. At this point in my life, that's one of the main ways in which I consume books because it's very hard for me to find time to sit down with a book 
And so I love using that as an opportunity to kind of combine my two hobbies um, because it's so tricky to balance all of the different hobbies that you have. If you're someone like me, and if you're listening to this podcast, then I bet that you probably are like me in a lot of ways. If you're someone like me, I have so many different hobbies and interests. I want to be watching TV shows and anime. I want to be reading books. I want to be playing games. You know, I'm a, I'm a content creator, so I have to kind of keep that in my mind as well. And so it's kind of hard to balance all of these things. And so I really love being able to combine those two interests. So let me know what games do you like to play and what do you like to listen to or watch in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube or you can email it to me at gamershearthpodcast at gmail.com so I can see. Before we go, I do just wanna plug my Discord community really quickly. I kind of mentioned it earlier when I was talking about World of Warcraft, but that is definitely not the only thing that we do there. We have an amazing community of gamers and we strive to be very wholesome and uplifting to all of our members. We have game nights, we have movie nights, we have all kinds of cool things. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can check the link in my description or my show notes to join the discord. Thank you all so much for listening. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I will see you next time we gather around the hearth. Bye everyone.